Welcome back to another behind the sound video on the Nissan GTR. My name's Ardil, and also welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, checked out the previous video of episode one on the Nissan GTR, make sure you do so. And also press that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the charging side of the system, but also some of the rectification work that we're having to do to get this system up and running. What we've got in terms of CTEC charging system, the car already came into us with a charger in place. However, again, Again, the wiring wasn't up to scratch and that's what we're rectifying today. So the cable run used to run from battery all the way across and then came out at the front end here. However, the way it was basically run, it was actually squished in between panels and it had crushed the cables. What we're actually doing now is running it all in really neatly. This is basically gonna run directly through underneath the actual carbon uh, insert here, live directly to there. However, everything done, everything cable tied, tape, everything done really neatly and obviously secured in there not only to make the install safe but also it actually just makes everything neat behind the scenes and that's what these videos are here to show you guys exactly what goes on behind the scenes and neatness and what we're going to showcase in a minute is obviously preparation side of things to getting this car sounding correct Obviously, as you know, if you've watched the previous video, there was a lot of rectification work that needed to be done, actually, in terms of the wiring, the safety of the actual system. There was a few issues that were actually could be caused of a fire hazard. However, that's all being rectified now. We're getting everything to exactly how it would be. In episode one, you would have seen there was a huge amount of this black gunk area, um, black gunk stuff all over the door, all over the panel work, and it literally was uh, obliterated with it. Really strange that how and why it needed to be in there, no idea. However, the sheet that was basically in there, the waterproof sheet that basically protects everything in terms of the factory door card and speakers and things like that, that was also pretty much ruined, covered in that black stuff. So we've ordered replacement stuff that's coming in and that will be a whole new piece cut out directly in house. Inside here, what we found is obviously a lot of the car was actually soundproof, and this is what today's focus is on behind the sound, is about soundproofing, the difference it makes. So we use something called a three mil sheet. Basically, it's a product from Skins. It looks like this, so it's a bit bigger than an A4 page. In essence, it's got a reflective material here. When you peel it back and apply heat to it, you get a black adhesive here that actually sticks to panels. In terms of what this system is, what it actually does, it makes a world of difference to a system. So obviously, it hasn't been applied in the neatest of ways, behind here and behind the scenes in terms of all of the interior. However, it has been implied, it has been, it is doing its purpose uh, because it obviously is applied to the actual panel. However, obviously with most of that covered, when we took the doors off, we would have thought, well, obviously the doors would have been covered because that's a very, very vital point of an install where it should be covered. However, one sheet, that was it. Door cards weren't covered, one sheet on the back of there and a little bit of soundproofing kind of sticking the actual crossover inside the door, which again is a big no-no that shouldn't have been done. However, it's all getting rectified. So inside here, we've actually got the speaker itself, which is the six and a half inch speaker. Then we've got the three inch, which is actually mounted inside the door. And now we've acoustically soundproofed the back of this panel. So there was literally, I think it was this sheet here, just one sheet in each door that basically that was it we're covering. However, now every pretty much inch of it is covered. Then we've got this membrane to basically cover and then we've got the back of the door card. There was zero soundproof on the back of the door card. So the, basically what this is doing is applying to all the key areas across the door, making the door a lot more solid, reducing that road noise, but also building a far better acoustic environment for the new speaker system to work in. If you look at Home Hi-Fi or you look at, well, Home Hi-Fi is probably the best example. Home Hi-Fi, you're sitting in a room, listening to a speaker in a box, the house isn't moving, the house isn't rattling, house hasn't got windows moving up and down. You haven't got all those little extra parameters around the system, giving it basically issues and trying to work past you're in a very very controlled environment a car is completely the opposite yes your components need to be good however behind the scenes on the install that's where a real difference in sound becomes because when you're soundproofing a vehicle when it's done, done properly when you're applying it into the right areas when you're using good product light skins it makes such a difference to a system you're basically trying to combat against all the rattles resonations that you're getting from a factory door card and you're actually building a far better environment for that new speaker to work in. Obviously, there's no point investing thousands of pounds in new speakers and equipment when you're not doing the install correctly. And soundproofing is a key, key part of that. So that's basically 
inside the door, some of the treatment work. I want to show you as well, guys, on the back of the actual door card itself. So we've got the Bose grill. Obviously, the car came with Bose from stock. So this is a soundproof panel now. What we've actually managed to do, so they had the three inch mounted into the door. Um, what we've actually done is on here, uh, we've actually, rather than having it bullet connected where most of the connections inside the door were all bulleted, what we've actually done is soldered those joins when they're actually placed onto the door. So like the tweeter, for instance, that's actually built into the door. There's no need for that to be on a disconnected plug or anything like that. So that's actually soldered in now. Disconnect is obviously when anyone needs to service the vehicle, it makes far more sense to have any areas or connectors, a bit like factory, where they need to be disconnected. So all these plugs and stuff, they're easily disconnected. And we've done exactly the same thing now with the three inch mid range here. As you can see, we're using an XD60 plug, all cloth tape neatly done. Plus obviously these again were bulleted onto the back of the speakers. These are now solder joints. So the back of every speaker was bulleted connectors. They've all been replaced with solder joints. But also what we've done is cloth tape. Obviously what cloth tape does, yes, it makes it look neater and that's great. However, what the main difference is, is obviously when that is in the door, it's not going to rattle around with anything and it stops with resonation and stuff like that obviously they will be secured as that goes into the door but it means that anyone working on the car if they're not electrically minded you can literally understand that you can disconnect that and you can't get it the wrong way as well so it's safe for and future proofing for anyone else who's working on the vehicle but now these door cards are completely solid um, James has been working on the car basically getting everything ready, uh, getting it prepped ready to go back on. Obviously, most of the work in the front doors are done, uh, mostly because obviously all the rewiring of all the systems. So the original system had um, quite low quality actual cable running throughout the system. So we're now using connections grade cabling. Every join that was bullet connected was now using a solder join. And anything that needs to be disconnected easily from a servicing point of view is now live directly on XT60 connectors. We've also run cable runs alongside manufacturer wiring down this left hand side originally when the car came into us we had the hats amplifier and the audison processor underneath the passenger seat that's all being removed we've run new cables everything's all neatly tucked away now we've got rid of all those joins and bullet connectors that was hooking up high level signals into the system we're actually soldered every single join and run cables back into the boot area so a hell of a lot of work goes into getting a system like this done obviously it's far easier easier if it's just done here in the first place we can get everything done correctly and properly how it should be done however obviously there are installs like this plenty of them across the world that's why these videos are now being posted live directly on Fridays and Sundays and maybe a few more coming up uh, during the week because we're finding that obviously showcasing a little bit more about what goes on and explaining a bit more to you guys not only educates you guys at home but also gives you an idea about the level of craftsmanship that we have here in our workshop facility so um, inside the boot all the cable runs are across so we've got powers here we've got blue uh, cable with this connections grade cabling so we use a mix depending on the install of oxygen free cabling to this blue 16 gauge stuff and then also we've got every bit of cabling is high grade stuff one really important thing is this cable so this is the power cable obviously we're running from the battery in the front down to the back so we've got a lot of equipment and you've got to be thinking about draw so we're using on this um, equipment so this is a two gauge cable depending on the level of equipment, we're gonna be having a distribution block on this occasion. So we're running two gauge back. The quality of the actual cable itself comes into play quite a lot. We're running off factory equipment in terms of alternator and factory battery. So what we're running is two gauge cable all the way back to vehicle, having a distribution block which is fused here, but also fused in the front just in case of any issues. But it's a distribution block here which is fused and that will distribute directly those like to four gauge cable down to the actual products itself. It's very important that obviously we consider the actual engineering behind a system. Obviously two gauge cable uh, in terms of obviously what draw we can pull down that the level of equipment that we're pulling down that is very important that we actually consider that on an install uh, which is obviously what we've done so in terms of the actual level of equipment that we're putting in the actual draw figures obviously over a distance you do lose power across this cut down this cable so it's, so it's calculated and always these cables are always cut to length to minimize the actual draw loss that you have from battery down to here um, down to where your products are so it's very very important that all those things are kind of thought about behind the scenes and that 
that's what our team specialise in. So make sure if you are having any electrical sound systems done, they are done properly to the highest possible spec in terms of cables. There's no point having these high quality products without decent stuff, decent soundproofing, but also decent cables behind the scenes. So hopefully you've learned a lot today and also enjoyed the video. If you have done exactly that, feel free to press that subscribe button. Also press the like button and share the video with friends and family, we'd really appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching guys, but stay tuned. We've got plenty more coming on this install. We'll see you soon.